In the wake of the terror attack in Paris, where 129 folks have been killed, folks all across this country uh, have been questioning whether or not we should allow Syrian refugees into the United States. More than 25 states have said they do not want refugees in their states. Now Congress has gotten involved. Yesterday, they voted in an overwhelming number uh, to mandate serious checks uh, must be in place before any Iraqi or Syrian refugee is allowed into the United States. This vote to yeas are 289 and the nays are 137. The bill is passed. Wait a minute. Not so fast. Find out who these people are. We know that there are gaps in this program and we have to keep the country safe. That's not what our law enforcement thinks. That's not what uh, anybody who's looked at this, uh, this problem thinks. They are already under much more scrutiny. Folks, the bill passed 289 to 137. That is a veto-proof majority. President Barack Obama has said he will veto this bill if it passes the Senate. But what's interesting is 47 Democrats also voted to support this bill, including four members of the Congressional Black Caucus. Here they are. And we're going to show them right now. You have Congressman Mark Vesey uh, from Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, Congresswoman Terry Sewell from Alabama. Congressman David Scott from Georgia, also Sanford Bishop from Georgia, all voting for the bill. The new guidelines require that the director of the FBI, secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, and the director of national intelligence personally vouch that each applicant from Syria and Iraq poses no threat. Debate yesterday took place also in the Senate. It's unsure if it will actually pass the Senate, but let's go to my panel. Certainly. Certainly, folks, there's a concern that if 289 folks voted in, in the House and the Senate passes this with a veto-proof uh, majority, uh, this could be the first time Congress, frankly, overrides President Obama's veto. Yeah, I, I think this is ridiculous and this is disgusting. And I, it, you know, if you're working propaganda for ISIS or Al Qaeda, this is exactly what you want. Look, the, the fact of the matter is, the people who are coming into this country, they're fleeing ISIS. We've had hundreds of thousands of refugees here over the last decade, and not one of those people has been found or accused or convicted of acts of terrorism. This is the most idiotic, jingoistic, racist nonsense that you could ever possibly do while prosecuting a war like this, but I'm not surprised because this is the kind of short-sighted attitude that many of our public officials have. Well, that, that, that's not accurate, Real, and actually there have been several arrests even recently in Texas, I believe, Arizona, the border of Texas and Mexico, where Syrian refugees or individuals that tried to cross the border, or again, folks that have already been in this country have some type of ties to ISIS. There is no way with 100% certainty that we can guarantee that the 10,000 individuals that the president is advocating for us to allow into this country won't have ties to ISIS or that ISIS won't attempt to to infiltrate them. The moral obligation of this country is to protect the American people first, not to accept those individuals into this country. If we want to be moral about it, if we want to care for them, we can set up safe zones in the Middle East. In that region, we can provide them with food, we can provide them with safety, we can provide them with health care services, but we do not need to take the risk of allowing those individuals to come into this country. You realize that ties to ISIS could simply mean that somebody has a relative who may know somebody who's a next door, who's a friend who's an ISIS, fine. and that's going to keep somebody yeah, from coming out of the country? Absolutely, absolutely. That is not preposterous. Preposterous. We could be doing the same thing with Mexicans. We could be doing the same, and we could do the same thing with black folks. That's how it huh. starts. Now that's a ludicrous you know, argument. I, I, you know what? I just, it, the timing, it's, it's, it's about timing. I mean, are we really, really surprised that they're trying to add an extra screening process considering what we've been going through lately? So I, I, I don't, I, I don't disagree, to be quite honest. And like you said, Roland, the numbers do speak volumes to but here's the, deal. the concern Ye that yesterday, people have. Yesterday, Josh Earnest, the Secretary of uh, press, press Secretary for President Obama, he said we have right now an extremely rigorous process. Right. So he said it's not like you're going to add something new to it. He said the existing process, he said it takes upwards of 24 months yeah. for somebody to be properly screened. So what are we saying now? Make it 36 months, 48 months? The question is, Roland, when they say properly screened, what do you mean? There is no way for us to know the background. So, Michael, wait, wait, Roland, wait a minute. Let me, wait, wait, let process. me finish my statement. Let me finish my statement. <laughs> there is no way for us to know with 100% certainty, unless the government in Syria is going to release documents on every last 
last one of those individuals. There is no way for us to know the background on these folks if it takes four or five years. We just don't know. And again, we should not take the risk in this country to allow someone to come in and kill innocent women and children. We can't take that risk. By the way, risk. we don't have to let someone come in. We have a lot of homegrown terrorists. And in fact, the vast majority of terrorists who shot people up in Paris <laughs> were born there, were born there in the 1980s. But they so were this trained is by ISIS. So, but, but, but they the, were trained the by ISIS. the matter is, you can go get that training and still be born in the country. A lot of these people didn't necessarily have any sort of criminal records indicating that they would engage in this behavior beforehand. I am willing to believe that seeing as how the vast majority of attacks and suffering that we've had in this country haven't come from people who have come in from abroad, I'm inclined to believe that the United States government is actually screening these people properly the way they have. And this I disagree with thing that. is jingoist nonsense. I disagree nonsense. with that. Folks, I, I, I disagree with that. There, you know, there was just recently, 20 seconds, 20 there, it seconds. Was recently reported a couple of days ago, I believe by the New York Times, that there are 73 individuals that work for the TSA that are considered terrorist risk and threats. And they were hired by a federal agency. 73 of them. The government couldn't figure that out, but you want 10,000 individuals whom we know nothing about their past to come into that country? That's cynical to me. The, the, the definition of terrorist risk could be related to, could be I stumbled on is, the wrong and that's website. Fine. It that could is be I happened fine. to travel to Syria that at one point because fine. I wanted to buy a sandwich. That doesn't that's, make and you that's terrorist. Fine. Better safe that's than sorry, though, right? It's always better to be safe than sorry, but we've been pretty darn safe. Heck, even Bush kept us safe. So, again, I don't necessarily think that this is a proper policy. Again, we can't take the risk. All right, folks, but well, we'll see what happens when the U.S. Senate makes their decision. Again, President Obama said he is going to veto this bill if it comes to his desk.